regarding Palo Alto as a firewall, right? Now, what is the basic thing that your Palo Alto firewall as a hardware it has? If I go to the website of Palo Alto, I can show you that there are several, several model numbers like 70, 80, 70, 50, 6,000 series, 5,000 series, you know, cloud series. There are multiple model numbers, right? So what differs between the model numbers is basically the throughput, right? Your IPS throughput or your uh, firewall throughput, the port density, the number of ports you have, uh, you know, the number of uh, concurrent sessions or maximum sessions that the firewall can simultaneously run. So those values will differ. You buy the expensive one, we'll have expensive, uh, you know, uh, limits, right? But the lower one will have lower limits as compared to that. But what is there inside the hardware, which makes the, you know, Palo Alto as a, Palo Alto as a specific, you know, firewall, which is going to be called as an exit firewall, right? So if you think about the hardware itself, so the hardware will have a one concept called as let me let me do one thing let me just draw it in boxes so it will be easy for me to so the hardware will have something called as you know we have something called as policy engine and inside that policy engine we have got a couple of things right so the first thing that the hardware has is called as a policy engine Okay, and the policy engine basically what it takes care is it takes care for application ID. It takes care of user ID. And of course, content ID. Okay, and this policy engine to work, this policy engine to work, it needs something called as an underlying networking engine. Policy engine to work, it would need a networking engine. The networking engine normally it controls two entities. Should have it controls two entities. One is called as the control plane and it has got the data plane so this will be called as your control plane and this is your data plane now we've got separate you know processor right, for control plane and a separate processor for data plane, okay. So in control plane, the processor that we have in the control plane, right, it is generally doing the management function, right, it is controlling the management port, right, plus the reason it is controlling the management interface is because, uh, and also, I mean, uh, all the management operations are part of control plane itself, like SSH or HTTP, HTTPS, if we do, it is taken care of the control plane. And in data plane, I mean, you have got the interfaces, right? Which is the physical interfaces, uh, which you connect to the endpoints, right? The physical ports, they're part of a data plane. And basically you are going to send and receive traffic through the physical ports, right? So any user data that, you know, spans through the firewall. So this is called as data plane. So if I've taken a firewall and if I've got certain ports over here, it's port number one, port number two, I've got some device. So if devices are sending the traffic between them, those are called as your data plane traffic, the real-time user traffic, right? So data plane traffic is having separate processor to manage. So you have got, uh, when the data plane traffic is going through, this processor will manage the content inspection. It will do security inspection. Like uh, for example, you know, uh, uh, ACL or security policy and all, okay? Plus networking, I'll write the networking because it will also do inspector routing table, NAT, okay, IP addressing, and all this stuff, right? So data plane processor will take care of content inspection, the security policy inspection, IDS, IPS, plus networking inspection. The control plane will normally inspect the management interface, all right? 
And uh, what happens is because of two separate planes, what happens is we have the feature of ISSU, in-service software upgrade. That means if I need to upgrade the span OS operating system, let us say I've got uh, OS that is running at 9.0.1. I'll talk about the OS version and I'll hold on for that. And I want to upgrade this to let us say 10.000, okay? What I have to do is, you know, I have to think of downtime, right? But it is not required over here because you can upgrade the operating system without any, uh, you know, downtime. So the user traffic will still keep on flowing and we can upgrade the operating system from a version to another version, right? That is the reason it is, you know, it supports in-service software upgrade. So the control plane is dedicated enough to do that job. All right. The most important thing why I've drawn this diagram because Palo Alto has got a very important concept called this. It works on an architecture. It works on an architecture called as uh, SP3 architecture. Right. That architecture is called a single pass parallel processing. Single pass parallel processing. The simple concept. But this is the architecture what you should remember if anybody is trying to uh, ask you what architecture the Palo Alto firewall is based on, right? It is based on an architecture called a single pass parallel processing. So if you have uh, gone through a certain concept called as, you know, uh, route once switch many, right? For example, nowadays the routers, right, has got this feature called as route once and switch many. Right, because of which you know the fib table could be built up right so if any packet that is trying to travel from the router from one interface to another interface so one segment another segment so the <clears throat> routing table is looked after before the packet is routed okay and that happens only once per pack once per packet and once the routing table you know has decided that hey this packet is there in the routing table entry this packet could be switched from that destination interface you develop the fib Right, so the rib, the entries first look after the rib and then the fib is developed and what happens is later, I mean, whatever packets you send to the same destination, it will be matched against the fib entry and we can do faster processing of the packet because the fib will also contain what your layer two cache. So I'm not discussing, you know, RNS over here, but just a quick idea, right? So fib also contains, you know, layer three information plus it also contains a layer two cache because of which you are processing of the packet, the forwarding of your retired plane traffic can be made faster. With same concept in mind, I mean, Palo Alto Firewall is also having the concept of single pass parallel processing. So it's like, you know, if let us say I'm sending a traffic from a trusted zone to untrusted zone, okay, I'm sending, let us say thousand packets. There's a session, the session is built up from trust to untrust, let's say, I mean, I'm sending thousand packets. Now what happens is it will, you know, uh, the Palo Alto firewall when the traffic is ingress, it will check only the first packet. Okay. In the first packet, it will analyze different types of information, right? It will analyze different types of information. Different types of information, we normally say it is going to analyze real time content. Okay. Where it is going to analyze <clears throat> your, and of course, content ID, user ID, app ID. I'll just keep it very simple. So it will take the first packet where it will analyze the application ID. So it will check the layer seven application. It will check the content in that application, what I'm sending, right? And it will check the user ID as well. Plus it will check the networking piece, right? What is source IP, destination IP, the port numbers? Does it match against the security policy? Does it contain any antivirus uh, uh, profile? Might be uh, certain IPS uh, features, which is can, which can be vulnerable. It can block this particular traffic, right? So all those features, it checks only one packet for one packet. Okay. It will not check for all the thousand packet. It takes the packet. It reads every details of the packet and match against this engines, right? So it match again, once packet and the remaining packet, right? Is parallelly processed. So what happens is your first packet is taken. First packet, you are doing app ID, user ID, content ID inspection. And this inspection is taking place parallelly meaning there is no single processor that is going to inspect all the thing, right? So you have got separate processor to, you know, uh, parallelly process the different contents. All right. So 
we normally call that as FPGA module. I'm not drawn inside it, but there are separate FPGA modules inside the uh, you know, Palo Alto as a hardware where it normally takes care about those parallel processing architecture. All right, so the whole idea is, I mean, uh, it can do the inspection based on, you know, uh, app ID, user ID and content ID. It can match it parallelly. It will take only one packet out of the multiple packet that it can receive and it will match the content and remaining thousand packets will be, you know, uh, uh, processed by the cache. So it will keep a cache of the first packet that he has actually processed, right? And this information will be processed against the cache. The remaining 999 packets will be processed against the cache. All right. So the whole idea is it is kind of, you know, route one switch main. All right. So the architecture is basically uh, going to provide you different uh, elements. So there is one question that uh, you can get is um, in single pass parallel processing architecture, and you told that uh, there are separate planes. So one plane is called as control plane. And one plane is called as your data plane. So what are the elements that we have in the control plane, right? So the control plane, normally it takes care about my management functionalities. So for example, uh, any sort of configuration changes that we do to the firewall, right? All the configuration commands that you enter to the firewall are basically on the management plane, right? You are sending the logging information. You normally do it from the management plane. You are, you know, reporting, right? Any sort of reporting or analytics that you are doing, it is from the management plane. And there is a separate, you know, uh, CPU or separate RAM, right? Or even separate storage could be given to the management plane itself. Even the HA interface. So what happens is by default, the management uh, interface and we have got high availability interface in the Palo Alto firewall. So those interfaces are part of your management plane. So this processor, this RAM and this SSD will take care about these interfaces and they're part of the uh, you know, management plane or basically they're taken by this control plane architecture. In data plane, what we have, we have got, I mean, uh, three processors, basically. There are three processors data plane will have. First processor will go for something called a signature match. Okay. The second processor that we have will go for something called as security processing. The third processor that we have will go for is network processing, right? So there are separate processor modules, okay? That has been embedded into the Palo Alto firewall just to work for data plane. So one processor module will check, will, will, will take care for signature matching. Another module will take care for security processing. Another module will take care for network, network processing, right? For signature match, I mean, of course, uh, what are the different levels of signature, right? Any traffic that is, you know, either going out or coming in uh, on the Palo Alto firewall will be matched against the, you know, content ID or basically the signature of the particular traffic. And it is done by your IPS, you know, uh, policy or IPS uh, license that you have uh, inbuilt. And it will normally take care of the traffic as any virus or if the traffic has got any sort of malware, spyware and all those stuff. Right, if the traffic is containing any credit card number or social security numbers, so all those things are taken care of by the signature match uh, in the concept. And security processing, the the processor which takes care of security processing, will look after your you know session built up process. Right? Session built up process, you know, if you are uh, doing any sort of SSL decryption, right? I'll talk about that SSL decryption. So if let us say there is a, a trusted user sending SSL traffic. Uh, to the Palo Alto firewall, right? And the traffic has to go to the outside um, with another SSL session. So if I am doing in the middle as SSL decryption, so I am decrypting the SSL you know, information and then I'm re-encrypting with another SSL certificate to the outside world. In that case, those SSL certificate decryptions and all, I take care about in security processing module. Okay, then for example, VPNs, right? 
VPNs you work over here, any sort of decompression technologies you work over here. Network processing, what happens is you work for normally routing table lookup, your MAC address table lookup, um, your NAT, okay, your quality of service if you do, quality of service, um, your flow control, right, ARP. So all those activities which can happen, it is taken care by the network processing CPU. All right. So your data plane, I mean, those, your any, any physical interfaces, think about it, right? So the firewall has got 10 physical ports. So all those 10 physical interfaces is part of your data plane architecture. All right, remember that. <clears throat> There is a one more architecture which I can draw, but that's not required. But if you can just talk about this, then what is the meaning of single pass parallel processing architecture where if I'm going to send thousand packets for one session, what I do is I check only for one packet. I understand the uh, app ID, user ID, content ID, every bits and pieces of that particular packet. And I process the packet parallelly and I create a cache out of it. Okay, if the packet is allowed, then the remaining thousand packets will be processed against the cache. Okay, so all your CPUs will not be interacting to process all the 999 packets, the cache or the buffer will be used as a reference to match the remaining packets and the traffic is sent out from the value. 